keep California cowgirls from vanishing. Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Sadie practices over the haunches with an ATV mechanical cow simulator. Pulling slack. And Susie's coming my way because she feels the pressure behind her horns. We give Eve practice in this session to follow and drive Sela. We are using a snaffle bit. Out here in the cow pasture, the, we call it the south pasture, because it hasn't started raining yet. And while the ground is still dry, we're going to continue to give the horses the ability to practice moving Sela around this pasture with Susie nearby as a draw, because Sela keeps trying to get back to Susie. We're working with Eve alone today, because last time I rode her with a Bozell, and I felt she wasn't quite ready to be doing this kind of work with a Bozell. We've got her back in a snaffle, and we've got her double reins on. Ashley's going to ride her today, and I'm going to try to help from the ground today with a bull whip. Not that I whip any animal, I just make a whipping sound like that. And a lot of cow punchers in this country and in other countries herd their cattle that way. I could either do it from the ground or from the saddle. My horses have been desensitized to that sound. Uh, Sela might be a little bit upset by it because she hasn't had too much practice with it. But the idea here is to direct her with the horse and the sound and maybe a block of my body on the ground into the pen. And then we're going to, as the weather permits, we're going to try to do it with two and three horses. Last time we just didn't move fast enough to get to the pen and raise our hand. And that's the name of the game when you're penning. So we're going to try to get better and better at it and be ready to get to the pen opening and say, yes, we've done it, and now record our time. Now Ashley's going to walk towards Sela. I'm going to try to help her by uh, blocking Sela's path, unless she's going where we want her to go. We're going to direct her movement. Over the haunches. If, if you have to move, lose the cow, that's okay right now. What is most important is the process. Okay? Good. She's still running around nicely for us, so it gives us some good practice. Easy. Easy. Sure would be nice to have more horses out here. Next time we'll try to do that. Okay. Remember we've got branches and and deadfall on the ground. Eve is looking real good. Ashley, does she feel good? Uh, it's a little bit hard. A little bit hard. Okay. So now position is very important. When you see Sela uh, about to turn, just try to stop Eve. Lightly, yeah, she's not quickly. listening to stop. Right she now. doesn't want to stop. Right. That's why we need to practice. So hold off now. Don't follow Sela. We know that Sela is going to be running. And if she's running in the direction you want, just stop. And watch to see. Watch the body language to see if you can figure out where she's going to go next. 
Eva's jigging a little bit. You can see her excitement. Okay, back around the haunches. Good, good. Eva's understanding. Okay. Now, if I if I were in the in the saddle right now, yes, I would have cut across right away because I knew she was aiming to get back to her herd mate. You don't need to run after her. You need to outthink her and watch her body language. Figure out where she's going to go next and block her. Out here on this kind of turf, you don't want to do a lot of fancy footwork. What you want to do is think about psychologically controlling the movement of your cow. Good. Okay. Slow down. Slow down. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Okay, try to, try to uh, stop, and whenever you stop, try to move over your haunches. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, good. See, just the fact that you stopped made Sela slow down, stop, back up. Go to the gate, to the fence, good. Okay, stop, stop, let her, okay, now back up. You see Sela starting to think, where can I go next? Good, 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 good. Over the haunches again. Come toward me. Now stop. We're out thinking her. Come toward me. I just opened my hands. I didn't even have to make the whip sound. Stop. Go toward the south fence. You know she's aiming for it. There you go. That turned her. Stop. Okay, stop. She's real excited, but that's good. That's great practice. Stop. Stop, Eve. Stop, Eve. Ah, she got past me. Okay. See, her drive is to get back to Susie, which gives us great practice here. Think about stopping now because you're pretty sure she's going to go toward the east fence. Okay, now she's stopping to look at you because she's wondering why you stopped. Okay, good, good. Ah, good fancy footwork. Nice. Eve is doing very nicely. Okay, stop. Back. Stop. Good. You see how Sila thought about it? <laughs> no stopping her voice. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Okay, so stop. Watch her. She's going to head towards the south fence. Okay, now she came back this way. So you come back this way towards this fence. Okay, stop. Stop. Back up. Good. Think about where she's going. Oh, it's awfully slippery here. We're not going to do too much more of this today. We don't want to hurt anybody. Safety's number one. There you go. Oh, almost. She almost went in the pen. <laughs> Come back here, um, Ashley. Let's talk about what you're feeling. I'm, I'm so tuned into watching Sela now and thinking about position to direct her movement that uh, I'm losing track of what's happening for you up there in the saddle. Tell us. So at the beginning of the session, um, Eve was pretty hard and not really listening to me, but uh, as she got further into it and realized what was happening and what her job was, she got a lot better and was turning over her haunches basically on her own and was, you know, figured out the job and was really into it, really excited to, to be working. It's a little difficult to work uh, back here, especially with only one horse because it's such a big area. and. The branches are pretty low and I'm kind of high up on Eve, but um, you know, she did a good job and even when I was trying to dodge branches and not really paying attention to the cow, she was still paying attention to the cow, so all in all, I think it was a good session. Great and a lot of fun to do it, so next time we'll have at least one other horse out here, maybe two if we can get three riders together at the same time and the weather cooperates. We practice penning Sela with a three-horse team. Today, for the first time, we have three riders on my three Morgan horses to try to pen Sela in this pasture. And uh, we're going to try to do it with a little bit of position logic. You're going to watch us put ourselves in position so that there's a corridor along the south fence. And my best cow horse here, Semi, is going to be the horse that pushes Sela down the fence. And so far, Seal has still been pretty energetic back here. 
She's uh, gives us a lot of good practice. We're going to see if we can open and close doors and get Celia into the pen. And whenever we can, we'll try to tell you what we're feeling, what we're seeing, especially how we feel our horses are feeling under us, which is something you may not be able to see. All right, so I'm going to go back into position. Back. I'm riding Eve today in the same tack she was ridden yesterday. And you see that on video film that we included in the show. Back. Sadie has a snaffle on as well. Everything as light as possible. Okay. She's going to turn back. Aha! Uh -huh. I get there a little. All right. Again, she saw that one opening because we just weren't fast enough. As a matter of fact, why don't you stay closer to the pen opening and I'll try to work on either side of that yuke tree clump. Ooh. I was having trouble getting Eve to work over her haunches and stop and back. These are all problems we'll be working on. Okay, as we get back into position, let's see if we can do it. We seem to be getting closer. Oops. Watch Sammy do her work. Ah. Okay, you got to get to the corner. Sheila sure is nifty on her legs. Ooh. <laughs> watch Semi. Watch Semi. Watch, because she knows what her job is. And Eve, I have to keep doing one rain stops to get her focus. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, here we go. Good, good. Sadie's all excited. Whoa. Sheila's rocketing around here. If I were you, I'd go a little closer to the pen opening. Back. I'm going to try to close this open door. Now, if she starts going in the direction you want, Katie, just stay yeah. back. They'll keep going. Stay back and be ready to go over the haunches if she changes direction. See me school my horse? Whoa. Oh. 
hold. Back, back. Go. When you're actually penning, your team members may each have a job or you may just be communicating with each other during the event because you never know what's going to happen. Everybody knows what their horse is capable of and you try to do what your horse best does. Back. I keep trying to stop Eve. Short, pass, and then stop. Ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Good. Get to the van. Get to the van. Raise your hand. <laughs> we did it. We did it. And you know, it was fun. It was a little bit nerve wracking because the ground is so slippery. And because each horse needs some polishing to be penning horses out here in the pasture with the low branches and so forth. But you know, it takes not just the athletic ability of the horse, it takes the riders to be thinking constantly. And it takes a little bit of cow psychology. Like, for example, if the cow is going in the direction you want it to go, remove the pressure. And use your voice when uh, it seems appropriate, or if your horse can't get to where you want it to go in time. Uh, position your team members in such a way that the, uh, there's somebody close to the pen opening. Not only to raise your hand at the pen opening, but if you're team penning with more than one cow, somebody has to keep those cows that are already in the pen, in the pen, because their inclination will be I want to get back out to the herd. And time is not called until all the cows that you're penning are in the pen. And no cows are allowed in the pen that aren't the cows that you're supposed to be penning. And all of that is determined by usually a number on their back. Like when, you, when the team first comes out, the announcer calls out the number, let's say three. Then every cow and there will be usually three of them that has a number three on it, has to be cut out of the herd, and all three of those cows must be put in the pen before you raise your hand. And furthermore, if more than a certain number of cows without that number go across a line, which is delineated ahead of time, you're disqualified. So you can't be just running around in the herd and dispersing the herd. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have work over the haunches, you've got to have communication and you've got to be thinking constantly and so does your horse. What is going to be the next move? And that's all for today. Here's a postscript. We were talking about tack for the next time we're going to do this. I don't like this bit, this D-ring snaffle in Eve's mouth for, for her right now. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use next time but it won't be this bit. Next time I do bring her out here, or one of us does, we'll point out which bit we feel is more appropriate because we want to practice a little bit more to get some soft stops. Stop is so important and it's often hard to get, especially if they're excited about something. And now Katie and Ashley will tell you uh, how they felt about their tack. Um, I don't like using the shank bit with Semi because she's she plays with it a lot and I feel like she's playing with it more than she's listening to what I'm telling her to do. So I'll probably just use a snaffle or maybe the um, side pole next time. Okay. Um, Sadie's bit was just fine while we were riding. She was playing with it just now for a little bit. I think she's a little bored. But um, she was totally fine and responsive. She's a little bit too responsive to spurs, but 
I think that's our only tack issue. No, you need to desensitize your horse to the spur and make them understand that it is a cue, a request. So we'll work on that with Sadie. And yes, I had a bad experience once with Semi with that shank bit, and that's why I have the pink donuts there, is uh, she tends to play with it, and she got the shank caught on her tooth. And this was, oh, a year or two ago, and uh, it didn't just fall out. It was caught between two teeth. And uh, she thought that that shank bit grabbed her, and she actually reared up. We finally got it off. I leaned forward while she was rearing and pulled it out of her teeth, and that's why I put the donuts on. And Eve uh, may do better with the elevator bit. We'll see, and uh, I'll explain it a little better if we decide to use it. Or maybe we'll do a shank with Eve. Maybe a slightly shorter shank than what Semi has on her bit right now. Can you zoom in on that shank? I don't like shank bits, but you know when you're in training and you need stop. Shank bits usually give it to you faster than a snaffle. Now a well-trained horse will do very well on stop and go and lateral movements uh, with uh, body language, with verbal cues, with a little bit of rain requests. But you know, although we're ranch versatile here, we still need a whole lot more training, especially when you've got a fast-moving rocket propelled cow like Sela to play with. Here are clips to show you how we are working on further spur training for Sadie and getting a resistance-free stop from Eve. Because of the rain, persistent rain, we're going to work on two problems that we uncovered in the pasture penning last time that we did with Sela. One problem was that Sadie, my youngest Morgan, can you move over here a little bit so Sadie's in the camera? We don't have a camera operator today, so we're trying to make do. Was real whoopy like with the spur cue. And especially when you're working with cows, to get that lateral motion and to get it quickly, you need to be able to use a spur if your horse is not re responding the way you hope they would. So, with this motor cow in my covered square pen, we're going to give Sadie something to follow. Katie is going to use spurs quite a bit. We're going to get Sadie desensitized to spurs. We're just going to tickle her with it, lightly touch her with it. And then in a few moments, and here she comes, here's Eve, and uh, you'll see her in a moment. Uh, Ashley's going to be riding with Eve, but this time we have a shank bit on her, similar, the exact same bit we used on Semi, which we decided Semi doesn't go well in it. We want to use a little bit more leverage to get Eve to stop lightly. And if that shank bit doesn't work, next time we'll try this one. I'm not a fan of shank bits, but they do have their purpose. This one's a straight shank. The one on Eve right now, the one we used with Semi, is a curved shank. So we're going to try some uh, bit power here to get Eve to understand when we ask for a stop and when it's associated with us sitting deep in the saddle and pushing your heels down and pulling your feet away from the side of her body, all of those are cues to give us a good light stop. So for a few minutes with each horse today we're going to show you what we're going to have to do many minutes of. Um, and this is a good time to do it in the rain, rainy season. We've got another week or two of rain. We're going to do it here in the square pen. We'll do it in my uncovered arena. We'll do it up and down the driveway where there's a sanded rock driveway and it's a nice safe place to work. We're going to get these two horses to be more responsive for us out there when we actually pen a cow. So I'm going to show you now how this motor cow works. I've had many a program on it. But uh, just a few minutes of it today will give you an idea how we're going to get these horses to work over their haunches in this covered square pen today. It's a motorized cow, and I'm in a little cage here, so I'm protected. And there's the cow hanging from a rope. The cables are up on the roof, so it's really easy to set this up. Motor cow is operated by a toggle switch. I am now going to go away from the camera, which is in the westerly direction. And you ready? I'll try to get both the moving object and Sadie in. 
uh, and also work the toggle switch to give you an idea how this practice is going to fix that particular problem, and that is the whoopy nature that Sadie gives us when we use a tickle of a spur. So here goes the motor cow. Ah, she's swishing her tail. She's getting, ah, she's getting stressed. Okay, now I'm gonna toggle back. What's, uh, how are you feeling up there? Is she she's, giving you whoopies? She's not whooping, but she's getting stressed over. Mm. Yeah, I see those eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she just has an O-ring snaffle on, by the way. We work with Sadie this way for about five minutes. We will repeat for as often as it takes to convince Sadie that spurs are a cue which she must accept without resistance. Ashley is going to work with Eve. Eve's pretty good about going over the haunches. It's just getting the nice light stop we weren't getting the other days. As a matter of fact, I was riding Eve and I was very happy with her following Sela and so forth, but I wasn't happy when I asked her to stop for a position. We were trying to pen Sela in the pasture by using some kind of position logic, which meant that Eve had to stop in a certain place because we had, as a three-man team, a plan to make a corridor for Sela, and we finally got it. We got Sela penned in the pasture, but I realized in so doing that we have this uh, stop uh, lightness problem with Eve that we need to work on it. So I had a D-ring snaffle on her that day. I decided we want to see uh, if we can get a little bit more lighter stop with a shank snaffle and of course we have the double reins on which helps us to get Eve to break at the pole. Good, over the haunches was good. Okay, the stop was good, that was a short run, it'll be a little bit longer coming this way. We practiced with Eve on the motor cow and then on the sanded driveway with both the curved shank bit and the straight shank bit. She improved upon repetition. The straight shank bit seemed to be the strongest of the two bits. Here is a short clip. Here we are on my sand covered driveway, long straight path. Our cast of characters, Sadie and Eve, Sammy, Rusty, and Susie, Heifer Calf Sela. For more information, www.cowgirlchannel.com.